Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News for this Monday. It's the 27th day of May, 2024, and it's Memorial Day here in the United States. And Memorial Day is a day we take time to remember those who have fallen in service to our country, and we thank God for these heroes, for what they have done for us, that we can have the freedoms that we do have. So if you're out today and you see someone who is a veteran, they're wearing something that lets you know they're a veteran of any of the past foreign wars or whatever it might be, whether it be first responders, police, fire, or whatever it might be. Uh, if you're there at a restaurant or a coffee shop, you got the money, make sure you pay for their meal and thank them first and foremost for their service. All right, boy, things keep hot going hot and heavy in Israel. Yesterday, rocket fire hits Tel Aviv for the first time in four months. Hun hundreds of thousands of people went to the air raid shelters. Israel retaliates and takes out two of Hamas's commanders. Now Hamas is crying, uh, massacre, massacre, we'll get into that. Hezbollah plans use of Russian Iranian missile to down Israeli aircraft also, so they're not messing up. And this is, of course, in Lebanon. So well, it never stops, does it? All right. Headline number one, rockets fired on central Israel from Rafa. Notice from Rafa. Hamas claims responsibility. Loud booms of interceptions heard in Tel Aviv throughout the Sharon and Gushdan areas. Four months since the rockets fired on center uh, of the Sharon region. On, and it was on Sunday afternoon, yesterday afternoon. Rocket alerts were activated in Tel Aviv, Hod, Sharon, Peter Tikva, Bra Anana, Herzliya, and other localities. Again, the first volley of... Uh, rockets that was fired that had been fired on television for four months one person was likely hurt when shrapnel hit a house in herzliya hamas takes responsibility for the attack which idea predicted would be likely as troops press push into rafa the terrorist group fired eight rockets at central israel on sunday afternoon marking the most significant attack out of the gaza strip in some four months and underscoring some of the challenges remaining for the israeli military as it seeks to out uh, oust this terrorist group from this last major stronghold. And uh, three of the projectiles were down by the Iron Dome anti-missile system, according to Israeli Defense Forces spokesman, and five landed into open areas. The attack, which came after 2 p.m., was swiftly claimed by Hamas's al qassam Brigade's arm wing, saying it bombarded Tel Aviv in response to Zionist massacres of civilians, of course, which there are none. Uh, some 80 minutes later, rocket sirens rang out in several communities adjacent to Gaza, including some where residents had returned to live after being gone for several months. The attack served as a reminder of the terror group's armed capabilities, despite more than seven months of an intense Israeli military campaign that eliminated Hamas following the October 7th onslaught of southern Israel. And again, it was launched from Rafa, the volley, a city on Gaza's southern edge that is currently the focus of Israel's military campaign and intense international concern for the well-being of the million-plus Gazans who had fled the city from elsewhere in the Strip for shelter before Israel had launched the offensive there. Okay, so over the past few weeks, close to a million Gazans have evacuated the city as IDF troops advance. So Netanyahu said, and this is so true, Israel must take over Rafah to eliminate Hamas's last remaining battalions and achieve the goal of total victory over the group. Though Hamas fighters have recently regrouped in other parts of Gaza where the military had already operated. Israel believes that Hamas leaders and many operatives are hiding in Rafah along with an unspecified number of hostages kidnapped by Hamas on October 7th. The city in southern Gaza is also one of the last locations where IDF believes Hamas has major rocket stockpiles. Now, one of the interesting things, the rocket factories where they make the rockets was have been destroyed earlier. That was been previously destroyed. So it's just what they've got now is the stockpiles. And if they can cut off any rockets coming in uh, from the Egyptian, you know, the tunnels there, and if uh, then all they have is the stockpiles that they have left. And when they run out of that, they don't have any more. That's what they're working forward to. Yeah, it's not believed that they have any rocket manufacturing capabilities amidst the war because the military took out the major factories in other areas of Gaza. All right. Um, nonetheless, they believe they're still uh, capable of launching rocket attacks, which, as we saw yesterday from the Rafah area, the terror group will carry out such attacks as troops advance further into the city. It's operated in similar ways in other uh, areas of Gaza. And this is why the campaign must continue. Uh, the military has argued that this offensive in Rafah is carried out in a pinpoint manner. This is really important to understand, pinpoint manner. They're not just bombing here and there, you know, willy-nilly. They're bombing very pinpoint uh, targets. 
Now, headline number two, Betty Gantz, he had a great response. He said, Israel needs to push forward. Following the attack, War Cabinet member, member Betty Gantz argued that they showed the need for Israel to push ahead with its military offensive. Today, missile fire from Rafah proves the IDF must act wherever Hamas is, and so it will be, he said, while visiting a military base in southern Israel. Again, Israel's government has vowed to destroy the group that, uh, and to keep it from being able to launch such an assault ever again, like what we saw on October 7th. And this, uh, again, some 120 odd hostages that are alive that are still in Gaza. The last Gazan rocket attack on Tel Aviv actually was January 29th. When Ten rockets were launched at the city and its southern environs. Mm -hmm. The last assault to reach Tel Aviv was December 21st, when a few shawads of about a dozen rockets were fired at Kafar Saba and other cities. Okay, so Hamas has basically said they're proud of their rocket attack, proof that Israel did not achieve its goals. Okay, they still have the ability to fire some rockets. And because the rockets are still there and because the hostages are there, that's why Israel must go into Rafah. Now, if you're watching yesterday, we had this, uh, gave you this idiotic story that one of the major publications there in Israel, online Ynet, had, whereas it was featured story. And this person says, uh, should we continue in Rafah? And he said, no, we need, basically, we should declare, we should surrender, uh, declare, you know, we're, we're done, get a peace treaty and move on and rebuild the country. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever read. That that story didn't last long. They took it down fairly soon afterwards because you have the hostages in Rafa. You've got missiles that are still there. You can't just stop right now. You've got to finish the job and could care less what the world thinks of this. They have to go forward. Now, having said that, here comes the problem. Number, well, first of all, let me give you this one. Hezbollah plans use of Russian Iranian missile to down Israeli aircraft. This is another interesting story. The organization intends to continue fighting as long as the war in the Gaza Strip continues. Now, Hezbollah, of course, is in Lebanon. They're northern Israel. They, they do not intend to reduce their activities against Israel in the north, according to a report published in the Kuwaiti Daily newspaper, Al Jadira. On Monday, the organization intends to continue fighting as long as the war in the Gaza Strip continues and is convinced that the U.S. will increase pressure on Israel to stop the war as long as the date of the presidential elections is approaching. It is stated in the newspaper that Shia terrorist organization was preparing for long months of fighting and preparing surprises for Israel. So again, they're getting hit from the north and the south. We've mentioned this before, some 60 to 100,000 people uh, that lived in the north, northern areas have moved, had to move out, so been gone for, for, since October 7th with the shelling from Hezbollah. And so you've got them from both the north and the south, and Israel must defend itself. And so they cannot, and they should not, you know, stop. They need to do what they can. They're doing pinpoint accuracy in their uh, responses to Hamas, which brings us to our main story here, the last one. IDF claims precision strike in Rafah. Hamas cries massacre. So what do you think the world news will say, the world uh, media Israeli forces targeted militant hideouts. They killed two top Hamas commanders, while terror groups claims dozens of civilian casualties, as they always do. The Israeli Defense Force carried out an airstrike in Rafah on the night of May 26, 27, targeting what the IDF described as a specific militant infrastructure, a gathering of Hamas militants. According to the IDF, the operation was aimed at neutralizing Hamas's operatives and dismantling underground networks used for smuggling weapons and planning attacks against Israel. The IDF characterized the strike as precise and essential for Israel's security, emphasizing efforts to minimize civilian casualties. We conducted a precise strike targeting Hamas's militants and their underground infrastructure. And this is from uh, the spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, acting in order to protect the security interests of the state of Israel, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here comes Hamas. Hamas, however, labeled the strike as a massacre, claiming that numerous civilians, including women and children, were killed in the attack. This is not a targeted attack. It was a massacre of innocent civilians. Hamas spokesman declared in a statement, the terror group accused Israel of indiscriminate bombing and targeting residential areas, leading to what they described as significant humanitarian disaster in Rafah. The spokesperson said, Israel's actions are a blatant violation of international law and attack on our people. They're trying to break the spirit of resistance uh, in Gaza by targeting our families and homes. Now, like we saw in that, that, that ridiculous editorial yesterday that hit the headlines there in Ynet. There was another one on one of the other Israeli websites today where you have some, I don't know where these people come from, some leftist lawyer who, who 
you know, said, oh, this is terrible. This, this strike is horrible. There has to be an investigation. This is terrible. This really is something wor worse for Israel, blah, blah, blah. In other words, buying the whole Hamas line, one of these anti-war leftist woke people, they get on the news and they, they, again, blame their own country for doing this. When Israel, like we said, is very careful in what they do. I've been to Israel, like I said, 18 times. And I've talked to many military leaders. I've talked to, I actually got to meet Prime Minister Shamir when he was the Prime Minister. And I uh, talked to their, their, their goals. And their goals have always been civilian casualties at a minimum. They go out of their way and harms, put themselves in harm's way for this. They would never hit a, hit a uh, site. They would never hit a, a building or whatever if they thought civilians were there. It's only to target terrorists. Yeah, Hamas, a bunch of liars will say it was, you know, they're hurting civilians, women and children died, uh, breaking the law. And of course, you get some bleeding hearts in Israel that come that, you know, get their face in front of the camera and say, well, there has to be an investigation. And again, this is this is war. <laughs> You've got to win this war. And the idea of stopping just is, is, should not be on, you know, even talked about until they get at least enough done where Hamas's military has been neutralized to the degree it cannot fire any more rockets. There are no more terror tunnels, et cetera. Now, it's going to take time and a lot of work, but it just has to be done. Now, again, like we say here, if you're new to breaking news, everything we do here has to do with what uh, the headlines are with respect to what the Bible says the world's going to be like at the time of the end. And as we mentioned here every day, Israel is isolated from the world. Sign number 21 of our 25 signs were near the end. Israel is isolated. Eventually, Zechariah tells us the whole world will hate Israel. There'll be a continual search for peace. That's another one of our 25 signs that they will never find it. And uh, they won't, in fact, their enemies won't let them have peace. The whole idea, again, the pushing every day of a Palestinian state won't happen. So Israel is finding itself in very difficult circumstances, as we've been saying, and they're only going to get worse. We know the worst time is still to come, but then eventually they will recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God, and put their faith on him, and he will return and set up his kingdom in that very place where he ascended into heaven, according to Acts chapter 2, so long ago. So again, please take advantage of our resources. Our website, Educating Our World, has over 400 videos, 65 books, uh, 12 on Bible prophecy. They're all free. They're free downloads, including not only the uh, 25 signs were near the end, but also the rapture of the church, the final Antichrist, the Jews, Jerusalem, and the coming temple, uh, 50 fulfilled prophecies, uh, you know, 50 fulfilled predictions that have already taken place, God's work in history. Uh, we've got an introduction to Bible prophecy there, and we've got um, other books on the subject of Bible prophecy to help you understand the totality of an entire book on the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion. A very large book. We go verse by verse through the Hebrew there. And Ezekiel 37, 38. So we want you to take advantage of these resources so you can understand. We don't want us don't people to be ignorant, as Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 4 13. I don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters. And we don't want you to be uninformed either. All right, God willing, I'll be back later today with another edition of Breaking News. Until then, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly, richly bless.